keep the business afloat. It's not going to make it viable. It's not going to promote future uh, future projects. And I think if if our, if as long as they're open with any sort of issues that may cause people privacy concerns, as long as they expressly say mm. what exactly it is that's going to the system, if people still choose to use it after that, I I think that's fine. I mean, we talk about recording you know, search searches and user activity, but there's not a single person listening to the show who can't tell me that their own ISP is not recording what they're doing. And the, the, the initiation of mm. observation is starting. Mm. We just don't know. Yeah, but it doesn't make it okay. No, it doesn't make it okay. Uh, and and arguably, you could say that BT is not BT, which uses this thing called form, which, of course, they change the names because it's a very bad publicity mm. around it. Uh, the fact that they do deep back inspection or DPI uh, is outrageous in its own right. And of course, very soon, you know, Theresa May, uh, wants to also legislate for, uh, snooping on the web users, things mm-hmm. like their web history and so on and so forth. I suppose email as well, uh, under the, you know, under the guise that, you know, we have to protect you from terrorists and all that sort of stuff, which I think is an exaggeration because of course, taking the civil liberties for an apparent, you know, fight on something which doesn't seem to affect this country so much. Um, not to the extent that it would justify, I think, taking civil liberties away and spying on people's web usage, which, of course, can then be used for blackmail, and we know about Martin Luther King and how taping was being used to basically try to silence him, actually force him towards suicide. You know, th- those stories actually tell us why we shouldn't allow people to record it so easily, because it can be used also against politicians to blackmail them, blackmailing them into doing corrupt things, going into war, and you know, getting some contract for cooperation because otherwise it will release some some sex secrets or something. Um, so all of this stuff is completely crazy. But again, I don't think that justifies. I don't think first of all, Ubuntu or Canonical as a company has any privilege to make a profit. You couldn't argue from the point of view of saying they deserve to make money, so we should let them do that. That that's a very poor argument to make. That oh, they don't make any money, and we should we should allow them to make money by basically turning the product, which is the operating system, uh, into something that's a tool to make the users the the product themselves. So then basically sell their users while selling their audience, which is the users of Ubuntu to companies like Amazon and Facebook, and saying here you can have their data and pay us some money for it. That's exactly what Facebook is doing, which is basically using the users as a product, and the real, you know, the real customers are the advertisers. People are building profiles of people and what they want and who they look for, and that that's I mean, their I mean, business model. What, what I'd say, to, what I'd say to that, yeah, yes, we can say what right does say Canonical have to make a profit out of Ubuntu? However, if Canonical is running at a loss and it becomes unviable to run it, then the loss of Ubuntu as a result of Canonical not wanting to to continue continue developing it and uh, maintaining its ecosystem would be a loss to people. Um, it, That's arguable. Some people will say that Canonical destroyed the ecosystem of of operating systems that are free, BSD and, and Linux, I've, I've and they have their reasons for it. And I've and the other said, things, that, yeah. Sorry, go on. yeah. The other thing they will say is Ubuntu does not contribute to the same extent some other distributions are contributing, mm-hmm. even though Ubuntu does seem to put all the resources into things like Unity, which is mm-hmm. more of a Ubuntu-centric thing anyway, so it's not so much going into the kernel, so they'll say if, you, if Canonical wasn't in the picture, it wouldn't be such a major loss. Uh, that's not what I would say. I mean, I would argue that that is really the, uh, the strength of Linux itself, because Ubuntu, or Canonical, sorry, has taken Linux, and they're now making it unique to themselves. We still have a lot of other distributions and still the same amount of choice within mm-hmm. the Linux environment, but Canonical now has their own unique little part of it, and yes, it is quite different for some people, and yes, a lot of people are uncomfortable with the commercialization, shall we yeah. say. But well, it's again, a commercialization is fine. Let's not confuse that with... The commercialization is fine. With, it's not incompatible with being a free distribution like GNU Sense or something. Uh, you know, you can use it commercially, fine. Uh, the problem, I think, is that Ubuntu has been pushing the, uh, the, Ubuntu obviously their number one bug, as they put it, assigned to Mark Shuttleworth, is that there is a lack of market share. So the main goal is not necessarily to make the freest, uh, uh, most liberal, most kind of privacy preserving operating system. It's to get more market share, which is fine. Uh, but some people say we don't care so much about market share. We want to ensure that people don't get tempted to install uh, some certain software that's proprietary, like Flash. Um, 
And some distributions do actually stick to the principles and saying we don't want to become another Android. Uh, I have to say I'm a bit disappointed in Androiding when I go to the browser and I go to the settings and I'm seeing that there's quite a bit of tracking there. Quite a few things that when you even look at the settings and you see that by default it's enabled, it makes you think like, oh, why the hell is this switched on? Like, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want this switched on. It might be of value to Google, but, you know, not so much for me. Uh, and, and that's the business model of Android as well, you know, the kind of having more control over the users. And Ubuntu seems to be increasingly focused in, for their own reasons, but, you know, they, they don't seem to be trying to establish themselves too much based on we are free, we are freedom preserving. You know, the front page of Ubuntu is showing like the icon of Sky, which is proprietary, it's actually Microsoft proprietary software. And they work on the logos and the fonts and the appearance and the marketing. So it's kind of like, hmm, it's, it's not exactly distinguishing itself based on we are free. Apple and Microsoft are not free. It's just like they are, they are themselves and we're cool, you know, and it's kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure that's exactly this distinguishing factor you should be boasting about. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think with uh, Ubuntu and uh, all the other Linux distributions, in the eyes of the mainstream consumer, the word free has very little meaning because they buy a PC from, from the shop, Comet, Dixons, whatever, and it comes with Windows preloaded. That to them is free, rightly or wrongly. And so when they see these other operating systems in other environments, it doesn't ring as as truth, and they don't uh, inv- they don't picture the same right. definition of the word free. Uh, yeah. To them, the average user, free is something that doesn't cost anything, and that's it. Right. To it. But then you have to ask yourself why many people prefer Android, and it's also because of the technical advantages. And it's possible for the free operating systems to be faster, to boot faster, to have no viruses, and but so on and so forth. The, the other thing doesn't the consumer doesn't clock yeah. that. And, 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 and to them, and they use might, good yeah. it's good. It's, uh, yeah, it's what they like. Um, the, the question is then. Um, is that a bad thing? Now, from a corporate point of view, where success is money, money is success, and so on and so forth, you'll say, well, the goal is to sell more computers, to get it to more users. And then you'll have the other side of the coin, or the other side of the... Uh, I suppose it's a trade-off between getting more users at any expense that you can have, uh, and trying to uh, attain a to attain the success by ensuring that the few users that you have preserve the same freedoms they had. So, for example, they don't have to, like, you know, search Google and give away their IP address with the search terms that they're using. Because, of course, they're always evading all sorts of things like that. And you can, you can spoof, you can create false, you know, fake queries being sent every minute. But, you know, you don't want to necessarily do this in an operating system by default. You could also relay the queries via some proxy or, but, you, you know, you can do all sorts of interesting things, but um, but all of those things will repair, will, will make the operating system less appealing to the, you know, the, what you might call the mass, the mass market the consumers. But I'm I'm but always in conflict because I'm, I'm I mean, look at Android. It's got 75 percent allegedly by IDC, which is tied to Microsoft. They say that Android's got like 75 percent of the smartphone market share, and, and while I'm happy because it runs Linux, I'm also kind of knowing that Android is not exactly, you know, very Linuxy. you know, a lot of the applications are proprietary, mm-hmm. you know, by design, because that's the way they're being sold by you know, is, is apps, and so, and, and there is hardly a way you can really deal with source code and compile, it's, it's really complicated to do that with I, a phone. I do think, though, uh, Android highlights uh, perfectly why, in Canonical's eyes, uh, certainly the Amazon deal was no problem at all. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you look at all the um, Android and all the social networking sites and all the services online that require your personal details, the average user, the people that they're going to be making money from, the ones that will sign up blindly for things, are quite happy to produce all the all the information that's required on these sites with no, with no issues, with no second thoughts. And, you know, whilst we do have discussions and people have concerns, the people that have concerns about the privacy and potential implications of putting details online and signing up to all these things are very, very small compared to those that don't. And I think that's why, you know, Ubuntu um, would not see the issue with Amazon as a, as a big deal on a whole to the average consumer. Mm-hmm. I mean, for people like me, it's no problem at all anyway. I've got no issue. And, uh, 
there's a lot of people I know that use Amazon quite often and again have no issue at all. My computer now is a, is a family PC which everybody uses. So apart from a couple of searches for Tree Food Tom or a couple of uh, children's programs for you know, the kids.